I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will try to understand how to find equation of oblique asymptote. Question before us is for each function determine the equation of oblique asymptote. Discuss how the end behavior of the function is related with the oblique asymptote. Now the condition for oblique asymptote is let me say linear oblique asymptote for the time being. I have videos on quadratic oblique asymptotes also. So we'll work on linear oblique asymptote. By default, whenever we say oblique asymptote, we mean linear. Okay. So what is the condition for a rational function to have oblique asymptote? Can you tell me that? Well, the condition is that degree of numerator should be degree of numerator should be equal to degree of denominator plus 1. So degree of numerator is 1 more than the denominator then we get oblique asymptote otherwise we don't get oblique asymptote. Remember, if you have oblique asymptote, you cannot have horizontal asymptote. For horizontal asymptote, degree of numerator should be either equal or less than that of denominator. Now, we know the condition that degree of numerator should be one more than degree of denominator. But then, how does that help to find the equation of oblique asymptote? Now, here we have two different cases. As you can say, degree of numerator is 2, degree of denominator is 1. 1 higher than the denominator is the degree of numerator. So we expect oblique asymptote. In this example also we expect oblique asymptote. They are very similar but they are very different from concept point of view. So let's solve and find the equation of oblique asymptote. The best way is to divide numerator by denominator. right? So we will divide x square minus 1 by x plus 1. So I'll do long division for the time being. We have x square minus x minus 5. So we'll just divide and see what do we get. Now it goes x times. We get x square plus x. And when you take away, you get minus 2x minus 5. So we can multiply this by minus 2. And then when you multiply here, you get minus 2x minus 2, the remainder is minus 3. Correct? So I can write this rational function as equal to x minus 2, that is equation of a line, plus the remainder is minus 3, it is minus 3 over x plus 1. So that is what we get as our equation for this rational function. right? So as you can see, it has been written in a two parts kind of. One forms a linear equation. x minus 2 is the linear part. So our rational function is the line plus something more, right? That is how you can look into it. So what we have done here is that we have drawn our rational function and this line represents the oblique asymptote. Equation is x minus 2. That means the y-intercept here is minus 2 right this is minus 2 and the slope is 1 so equation of this line is x minus 2 right so that is how it should look like now let's answer the second part of the equation so we have already found the equation of oblique asymptote we can say equation of oblique asymptote is so we have oblique asymptote equation is y equals to x minus 2 correct now we will see and discuss the end behavior of the function as related with the oblique asymptote. Now if x is very large positive value, right, in that case our rational function will be x minus 2 minus 3 over something. That means less than the line itself. So as x approaches infinity, the function approaches the line x minus 2 but it is slightly below it. So from down below, do you see it's that difference between the line 
x minus 2 and the rational function is minus 3 over x plus 1, right? So, so that is the difference. So it is approaching from bottom. Do you see that? Since this is negative. But if x is negative, right? So what we see here is that if x is approaching positive infinity, then y is approaching x minus 2 but from negative side. I should say negative side. This value is slightly lesser. But if x is approaching negative infinity, that means if x is negative, large value, negative negative becomes positive. So y approaches the line x minus 2 but from the positive side. Do you see it is above the graph? Do you see that? It is above the line. So that is the behavior which we are talking about. I hope you understand and appreciate it. Let's do one more example. And again this time we will do division so that we can find how we can write this function as a combination of linear function and some remainder, right? So we'll divide by x minus 2 the function which is x squared plus x plus 5. So we can do x times, we get x squared minus 2x. When you take away, you get 3x plus 5. Then you can do plus 3. So that means 3x and 3 minus 6. And when you take away, you get 11 here, correct? So therefore, we can write this function as x plus 3 plus 11 is the remainder this time, positive 11 over x minus 2, correct? So in this particular case, our oblique asymptote in this particular case is y equals to x plus 3, right? So that is the line x plus 3, y equals to x plus 3 is our line. Do you see that? And the end behavior now is that when x is positively large, y is positive, x is positive. So the rational function is more than the line. But if x is negative, then the rational function is less than the line. Do you see that? It's approaching from bottom. So that is what we understand by end behavior and really helps us to sketch a neat and accurate graph of the function. So we are only discussing oblique asymptotes, so I'm not getting into other details. But have a good look at it and then you can also learn how to sketch these functions. Fortunately, graphs are given to you so you can figure out x and y intercepts, or vertical asymptotes, and you already know oblique asymptotes. You can sketch this graph on your own. Thank you and all the best.